In this presentation, I'll be looking at health implications of football headers, reviewing the case study of brain diseases caused from heading the ball, and the debate around adapting the game to help prevent dementia and Alzheimer's. I'll be reflecting on the social, economic and political factors surrounding both the issue and the functions of the sports industry, as well as the role of journalism and its duty to inform while shaping a narrative, assessing how effective it is in reporting on the subject. To further introduce the concept, we're looking at a continuing globalised news story that covers the correlation between brain damage and repeated head impacts in football. It follows up on a series of results that revealed an increase of neurological diseases such as dementia and Alzheimer's within ex-professionals of the sport. Findings suggest that former players are three and a half times as likely to die from a neurodegenerative disease as a non-playing member of society. Research spanning two decades has been carried out following a court ruling in 2002 which found former West Bromwich Albion centre forward Jeff Astle had died from a disease caused by heavy leather footballs aged 59. In recent times we've seen similar instances with the passing of Nobby Styles and Sir Bobby Charlton. Considering this, it's essential to acknowledge the role of journalism in this story. Newsworthiness is something all good journalists will assess and the value coverage presents to society, as argued by Brighton and Foy, who stated that news values tend to be of two kinds. The first examines news stories from the perspective of the working journalist and then tries to isolate the features of an event which make it likely to qualify as newsworthy. As of 2023, FIFA recognises 123,695 registered professional footballers worldwide who would each benefit from widespread reporting of heading a ball, and this is without mentioning those who have retired from the sport and may be concerned with their health. Reporting on health risks is always a topic in which journalists must take care, ensuring clarity and brevity throughout, as supported by Kishvari et al, who stated that considering the touchy issue of medical findings, it is incumbent on those involved to prepare accurate, complete and reliable news, as inaccurate, incomplete and unreliable news could lead to unrealistic expectations in the public. To further understand the role of a journalist and how they tackle the topic, I spoke to industry expert Thomas Smith, who works as an in-house journalist at Birmingham City Football Club. He said it's vital the club uses its platform and EFL status to focus on ethical issues that reside in the game. We recognise the developing connection between heading the ball and brain diseases and acknowledge members of our fan base and community who may have been impacted. He also said, during the pandemic, we ran a series of events to support our community, which initially began online inviting people to openly talk about dementia and Alzheimer's. COVID-19 was a lonely time for many, and we recognised the need to return the support of those who have supported us over the years, and we proudly continue to check in to this day. He finished by saying it's also important that we provide a platform for people to speak up about these issues, allowing voices to be heard and awareness to be spread. It's also our duty to be the point of contact for the fan base and maintain a door always open mentality. And I've included a link there to the website reporting on one of these meetings that Thomas mentioned, which took place during the pandemic. With this in mind, it's important for a journalist to examine the social factors and issues that arise, implementing a sense of trust to provide exposure to the problems, as highlighted by Kovac and Resentiel, who claimed that a journalist's independence has been interwoven with their social obligation to be loyal first and foremost to the citizens who rely on them for the information needed to be free and self-governing. In regards to the topic of football headers, victims of brain injuries caused on the pitch will rely on journalists to spread awareness and bestow faith in that they'll show dedication to helping communities, and this can be as broad as on a global scale. In November 2022, it was reported by numerous outlets that a group of 30 ex-footballers planned to sue the FA for failing to protect players against brain injuries. This number could increase due to the revelation of the story by journalists, once again cementing the importance of their role to a social degree. In the stories I've showcased on the upcoming slides, it's clear that the social issue becomes a worldwide concern, with investigations taking place in Scotland, Norway and Sweden. It is the duty of journalists to simplify the matter and make it global local as supported by Herbert, who stated that global journalism has to find stories that go beyond politics and government. 
it has to find new leads, new ways of presenting stories to a global audience and that means global localness. To assess the influence of a journalist from an economic standpoint, it's paramount to first look at the total revenue of the largest football market in the world, and that is of course the European, which according to Statista.com boasts a staggering £25.4 billion after 2023. On our home shores, the English FA have been presented with the challenge of balancing player welfare with the integrity of the game. Changing heading rules would bring about major economical effects, particularly with investing in research into game tactics coming at a cost to both organisations and its clubs involved. On the flip side, the argument of growing health concern should surely be factored in, and with the revenue made by the FA every year of around £518.5 million as of 2021-22, Question marks will continue to be raised as to why more hasn't been done sooner, investing in aid and support for victims of brain disease and guaranteeing future prevention. So, to consider this from a journalist's point of view, it's important to hone probing skills in economically holding organisations to account, as argued by Doyle, who highlighted that financial journalists are generally good at analysing companies and interpreting stories in stepping back to seeing the wider picture and spotting things that deserve a closer look. This is because they don't have the time and the opportunity and perhaps the education and training to be more proactive. Whilst there are clear social and economic factors to which stem from this story, it's also essential to consider political components too. Assessing the sheer scale of football's popularity is the best place to begin, with a huge number of people participating in the sport since its creation in the 1800s. Over the years, the game has been altered in various ways, however, heading the ball has always been a constant throughout. To adapt or remove heading from the sport would create major political ramifications within the community and industry. To keep it simple, teams would have to change the way they receive the ball from a cross or a corner, even if players were made to wear head protection. At times, journalists must play devil's advocate and perhaps report the lesser of the moral angles, as with this case, some members of society could reject the idea of changing the politics of the game and so their feelings should also be reflected in the media. Applying balance to a story invites a wider conversation as supported by Benjamin, who stated that by limiting sides it may do a disservice to the story. If both sides are not equal or there are more than two sides, it may steer a story towards a conflict when in fact there is a consensus. In July 2022, it was widely reported that England would follow Scotland in trial in the ban for under 12s heading footballs. While it is a positive step in reducing future brain damage, given that the specific organ undergoes major development around this age, it's also important to take into account children will be missing out on precious years of practising such a crucial element of the sport. In the second part of this presentation, we'll be looking at a showcase of journalism linking to this topic. Upon reflecting on the three articles presented, I'll consider how the journalism contributes to spreading awareness of the issue, how effective the journalism is in benefiting society, what angle the journalism approaches when shaping the narrative, and the specific form of journalism conducted, whether it be statistics-based, campaign, or an informative piece. In this first article from The Guardian, writer Nick Armes delves into the science behind blood pattern changes in the brain caused from heading a football. Straight away, the piece is effective in breaking down what could be a confusing and detailed scientific topic to discuss, but opting to use the who, what, where, when and why strategy in its opening paragraph, as supported by Irby, who states, the five W's builds a concept of news schemata working on a model of text and to transform rather than just retell the story. The use of the inverted pyramid is clear throughout, with the most important information and facts included in the first paragraph, an operation supported by McFarlane, who claims that the top section of the pyramid should be tight, relevant and catchy, yet contain all the most important and interesting facts which make up the chosen lead. The use of the large photo at the forefront of the article provides a clear suggestion as to the topic, and works well with the headline, both straight to the point and represent the social, political and economic factors that I referred to earlier, as supported by Chapnick, who suggests that visual communication creates comprehensive, ethical coverage of social issues that will engage audiences. In regards to the quotes, they help to bring the 400-word piece to life, presenting the consumer with an industry expert's insight into a case study that took place relating an altered level of microRNAs that occur when heading a football and the increased risk that takes place. The inclusion of such quotes is supported by Itul and Anderson, who noted that quotation can be the soul of a new story or feature. 
This next article, also from The Guardian by writer Anna Borden, follows on from the initial findings of the previous piece, displaying a development of the story tying in the fact that footballers are 50% more likely to develop dementia. Whilst the news publication does not directly campaign for the banning of heading, it does discuss other campaigners within this article to shape the narrative, which is supported by SCORE, who states that it is the style of journalism that seeks to persuade others of a particular point of view. It may encompass any issue which an editor or reporter seeks to influence public opinion. The article also embodies the role of global local drawing from scientific studies in Sweden and relating them back to the English game by discussing the banning of heading at under 12 level, which in turn goes back to Herbert's theory of global localness that I previously discussed in regards to social issues and the article attempts to welcome consumer engagement off the back of this. The final article from The Guardian, written by Geneva Abdul, while shorter, gets straight to the point about political action being taken place in Scotland as a result of the scientific findings. The directness brings brevity to the piece in what can be at times a detailed topic, improving consumer scannability. From a journalistic standpoint, the inclusion of hyperlinks contextualises the piece to previous articles to help paint the narrative, as argued by Turo, who states that hyperlinks designate which sources should be given public attention and to what degree. After analysing these three examples of journalism, it's clear the public's reception has been positive. The Guardian has been acknowledged across social media for its coverage on dementia in football and their efforts to spread awareness. As you can see on the right, they picked up News Provider of the Year, with users of X, formerly known as Twitter, applauding the news publication for investigating the subject over other outlets. Journalists utilising social media as a medium has become paramount in increasing exposure to gain a mass reaction, as supported by Wilnat and Weaver, who argued that journalists who want to motivate people to get involved or let people express their view or who want to get information to the public quickly and reach the widest audience possible should be supportive of social media that allows them to do this. Whilst it is important to acknowledge other players reporting in this issue, the previous three articles were each published by The Guardian. When considering their role in the story, well, they sit inside the top eight sold newspapers in the UK, boasting an estimated 105,144 circulation per month, writing for the more middle-class centre-left demographic. Its coverage into sport and health are both highly regarded for its factual appeal, which has been reflected in the number of copies sold, as stated by Carter, who claims that sales in broadsheets or quality newspapers had actually held up relatively well. Papers such as The Guardian published separate sports sections, for example. There was much quality writing, something that had been promoted by the growing middle class interest in football. To succeed, it's important to maintain consistency in writing for an audience, whilst listening to their needs. Shining a light on a serious topic like dementia or Alzheimer's is an operation that must be done with quality and care, something that lesser serious tabloid newspapers like The Sun is incapable of. After considering the issues in detail and reflecting on the factors that play within both the sports industry and its audience, conclusively, journalism plays an essential role in uncovering all dimensions to a story. Anticipating the social, economic and political issues that surround a narrative is what drives journalism forward, as argued by Wester Hall and Joe Hansen, who stated that the journalistic selection process has been described as probably more important than what really happens when it comes to determining whether or not some things become news. Delving into a topic and deploying investigative journalism for all angles, and not just the initial headline, can create a huge impact in communities, especially when health is involved. Groundbreaking research and reporting in matters that involve public livelihood displays the reasons why journalism is essential to the evolution of both media and sporting sectors. The coverage of heading footballs, such as that of The Guardian, has been well regarded by these communities, using important data from organisations across the globe to help areas awareness and provide strong foundations to their reports. And here is my bibliography displaying all academic references used in this PowerPoint. Thank you.